a system we built to automate the model parallel training of large neural networks. This project is a collaboration between UC Berkeley, AWS, Google, and uh, all other institutions listed here. Uh, le let me begin with some background on large models. A lot of recent advances in deep learning are enabled by large models. For example, two years ago, OpenAI released the famous gigantic GPT-3 model with 175 billion parameters. This model is recognized as one of the most important breakthroughs in machine learning. Today, the benefit of scaling models doesn't diminish. People are still trying to train larger and larger models. Uh, but how is this related to OSDI? Let me explain. Training large models is actually not a machine learning challenge, but an OSDI challenge. If we take a closer look at these groundbreaking large models, the designs of the models are almost the same as five years ago. People just use more machines to train larger models on larger data sets. So these breakthroughs are enabled by simply scaling existing model designs. So in other words, this, uh, the large model breakthrough requires few machine learning innovation but a lot of system innovations. Uh, so this is good news for our OSDI community. Okay, if it's a system problem, then what are the system challenges? Uh, let's begin with the computation pattern of deep learning. First, we have a batch of input images. We feed the input into the deep learning model. The computation involves a forward propagation to compute the prediction and a back backward propagation to compute the gradients and updates the model. Um, so now, if I want to scale this training pattern, we will face two problems. First, what if the input data is very large? For example, we want to train on millions of images. Second, what if the model or the layers are very large? For example, we want to train a model with billions of parameters. The difficulty of these two problems are different. Uh, the first problem is easy and has been well studied. It's called the data parallelism. We can partition the input data and the replicate the model. So here are two GPUs. We can replicate the model on all GPUs and uh, feed different input batches to different GPUs to parallelize the computation. The second problem is much harder uh, if, because if the model is very large, the size of the model can be much larger than the device memory capacity. As shown in this figure, we need at least dozens of GPUs to hold the weight parameters so we cannot afford to replicate the model. Needless to say, we also have to store a lot of intermediate results. So we also have to partition the model. However, unlike the data set, which are just a sequence of files, the model is a complicated computational graph. How to partition it is non-trivial. So now let's take a look at computational graph and explain why it's hard. The graph begins with an input x, then we have a lot of matrix modifications and convolutions, um, and some element-wise activations. This figure only shows the forward propagation of the graphs. The real graph will be more complicated with backward propagation and the gradient updates. So how can we partition this graph on two devices? Uh, the most straightforward way is to cut the graph into, in the middle and put them on two devices. This is called the interoperator parallelism. This cut is actually not too bad because the communication across the cut is small. However, due to data dependency, the second device cannot always be busy because it has to wait for the first device to generate its input. So the second device will be idle at some time. Uh, although this can be eliminated by using pipelining, it still results in device idle time due to the dependency between forward propagation and backward propagation. So now, if we want all devices to be busy, what, what should we do? Instead of partitioning the, at the graph level, we can partition each operator. We can partition each operator and let different devices work on different regions of the same operator. This makes all devices busy, but uh, it leads to more frequent communication because the devices have to sync up to one operator if the next operator cannot preserve the previous partition. So in summary, this page shows two basic patterns of partitioning a graph. As I just mentioned, there are trade-offs between these two kinds of uh, parallelism. So 
So for the interoperabilism, uh, it requires less communication but has more device idle done. And for intraoperabilism, it requires more communication but has less device idle time. Under this classification, there are more variants. So first, for the intraoperabilism, there are multiple possible strategies to partition an operator. So for example, for a matrix, we can partition it along rows, or we can also partition it along columns, or we can replicate it. When connecting these nodes in a graph, different partition strategies can lead to totally different computation and communication cost. So this is a very difficult combinatorial problem. And for interoperabilism, we can increase device utilization by pipelining the computation of multiple input batches, as shown in this figure. We can put three layers on three devices, then we can, all de we can keep all devices busy by letting them work on different uh, input batches. Uh, the intraoperator parallelism and the interoperator parallelism can also be combined, as shown in this figure. We can cut the graph into two parts for interoperator parallelism. Then for each subgraph, we can also uh, do intraoperator parallelism inside the subgraph. For an MOE model, uh, we can get the best performance only when we combine these two kinds of parallelism. So in summary, all these choices form a sophisticated search space with many trade-offs. So it's very hard to efficiently search for a good strategy in this space. However, this is still not the only tricky part. The next tricky part is how to map the partitions to actual devices. So after partitioning the graph, we have to map the partition to devices. So here is one GPU. Uh, it's definitely not enough for training large models. So I get a machine with four GPUs and more machines with more GPUs. Here comes the tricky part. The network used to connect these machines show a two-level hierarchy, where we have fast connections for GPUs inside a node and slower connections across different nodes. So the challenge here is how to map the graph partitions to this two-level hierarchy. As you can see, this problem is very, very challenging but very important. Over the past few years, people have developed various systems to solve this problem. I will list a few here. Each of the projects below is developed by a good team of researchers and engineers. To classify them, I draw three circles, a red circle for intraoperator parallelism, and a yellow circle for interoperator parallelism, and a blue one for whether the system can be applied to general graphs automatically. So first, people design specialized strategies for specific models. Megatron LM is a good example. Um, people uh, designed a specific, a specific strategy for parallelizing the transformer neural network. Uh, later, they improved it by adding interoperator parallelism for better scalability. So there are a lot of other systems trying to address this problem. However, they, cannot, they either cannot support both types of parallelism or cannot automatically apply to a general graph. In contrast, LPI is the first system that can solve both types of parallelism automatically. Um, yesterday, you also heard of Unity. Unity is built on top of uh, FlexFlow. Uh, different from Unity, LPI targets models that are much larger and, the folk, and uh, uh, makes auto parallelization works for these large-scale models. Uh, next, I will let Johan tell you more about LPI. Hello, hello, OK. Um, so hello, everyone. Uh, I'm Johan, and I will give you an overview of the Alpha system. Cool. So in Alpha project, our goal is to build a unified compiler that automatically finds and executes the best strategy with both inter- and intra-operator parallelism for large deep learning models. Alpha has a very simple user API. So Alpha provides a Python declarator at alpha.parallelize. You can put this decorator on top of your Python deep learning training function. When the function is being called for the first time, it triggers compilation. Then the function will be parallelized and run distributedly on your server. Under the hood, this simple API is made possible by several innovations of the Alpha project. To deal with the complicated search space of so many parallelization techniques, we organize the parallelism techniques as a two-level hierarchical space. And we then design optimization algorithms 
to derive effective parallelization plans at each level. And finally, we implement an efficient compiler to generate the plan and a high performance runtime to execute the plan. So given an input computation graph, the whole parallel strategy search space of this graph is a complex space that involves all kinds of inter and intra operator parallel strategies as shown here on the slide. So previous works failed to find a single unified al algorithm to derive a good parallel strategy from the whole space. And in ALPA, the key to make this problem solvable is a decoupling and a reorganization of the search space. More specifically, we search for interoperator parallel plan at the first level. And at the next level, we derive the best intraoperator parallel plan for each stage of the interoperator parallel plan. So we design alpha compiler based on this search space decomposition. The input to the compiler is a computation graph and a cluster specification. We design three compiler passes to do the optimization. First, the interoperator pass finds the best interoperator parallelism with dynamic programming. And secondly, the intraoperator pass finds the best intraoperator parallelism strategy with integer linear programming. Note that the optimization here is also hierarchical. So which means that the higher level interoperator parallel pass will call the lower level intraoperator parallel pass multiple times and make a decision based on feedback from the intraoperator pass. And finally, the runtime orchestration pass will realize the parallel plan and actually execute the strategy. So let's walk through an example and show what each pass does. So for interoperator pass with the given computational graph, we need to partition the graph into multiple stages to form a pipeline. And there are different ways to partition the graph, and we need to select the best of them. So even if we pick how to partition a graph, we still need to assign each pipeline stage devices to execute the stage. So in ALPA, we extract all the devices as a 2D device mesh. We assume the devices along each dimension have the same communication property. So for example, for a typical GPU cluster, we can set one dimension to be all the nodes. And all the communication along this dimension will go through slower cross-node Ethernet. And we set another dimension to be all the GPUs within a node. So, and here the communication will go through the faster connections, like NVLinks. So then we assign devices to each stage by picking the best thumb mesh choice within the device cluster. So in ALPA, we find that the problem of how to partition the computation graph and how to design each partition, how to assign each partition stage a set of devices from the device mesh can be nicely formulated as a dynamic programming problem to minimize the total pipeline execution latency. So more details about the algorithm can be found in our paper. So let's now focus on the intraoperator pass. So for a single stage and a sub-mesh of devices from the interoperator pass, the goal here is to parallelize the stage on the devices in the sub-mesh with the best intraoperator parallel strategy possible. So in ALPA, we find that this problem can be formulated as an int integer linear programming problem. So specifically, the choice of different parallel strategies for each operator in the computation graph can be formulated as a decision vector in the IOP. And the optimal parallel strategy can minimize the ILP objective, which is the sum of the computation cost of each parallel parallelized operator and the communication cost within and between different operators. Again, more details can be found in our paper. So naively applying previous passes will take very long time for compilation. In ALPA, we also introduced several optimizations to reduce the compilation time. So we apply communication-aware operator clustering in, in both IOP and DP to reduce the number of op operators we need to consider in the computational graph. And we also perform early stopping in the DP when it cannot produce better results, and we distributedly compile different parts to further reduce the compilation time. As a result, we can reduce the compilation time to less than 14 minutes for our largest experiment, and we can further reduce it at least by at least 50% with the new search space pruning we implemented recently. So with the inter and intra operator passes, we can transform the original single node computation graph to these parallelized pipeline stages. With no existing framework supporting executing such a complex parallel plan, we also design a runtime to efficiently execute the parallel plan. 
So specifically, we compile each stage to an executable with static, static instructions. These executables are then sent to the corresponding submeshes. The alpha runtime orchestrates intra-operator parallelism within a submesh and inter-operator parallelism across multiple device meshes. We also implement various optimization for cross-node communication in the runtime with more details, details in the paper. So now let's move on to the evaluation of the alpha paper. So we compare alpha with previous works on three widely used models. Uh, for GPT, which is the standard transform model, we test for models up to 39 billion parameters. The, because the transformer is an extensively studied model, but we still can match the performance of the best existing expert design framework. Actually, we find almost identical parallelization strategies as the best manual system. So for g -sharp MOE, it's a transformer with additional mixture of expert layers, and we test for models up to 70 billion parameters. We show that we can outperform the best manual baseline on GPU by up to eight times on this AWS cluster. And for wide ResNet, which is a significantly different model compared to transformers, it is a convolutional neural network, and there is no existing manual model parallel strategy for it. We show that we can generalize to the models without manual plans while others fail. So we also use alpha to perform inter-operator or intra-operator only as a baseline. We show that combining inter- and intra-operator parallelism can scale to more devices. And here we also show a case study of the parallelism st strategy we find for wide ResNet on 16 GPUs. As you can see, this is a pretty complicated plan and it's really hard even for an expert to design. So in summary, we present Alpa, an automatic model parallel, automatic model parallel training system with both inter-operator and intra-operator parallelism. Alpa matches or outperforms specialized system and generalize to new models. You can try Alpa now and start us on GitHub by visiting alpha.ai. And again, happy to be here, and we are happy to answer your questions.